What's up, everybody? Welcome back to XJW Diaries. My name is Justin. So over the weekend, I was contacted by somebody who is currently Pima, and I've talked to this person before. And this person wanted me to pass on a message from his friend, who is also currently Pima, who is currently serving as an elder, and who is currently working at Bethel. And as you can imagine, this person has some very interesting things to say. So I'll read this person's message in his own words, and I'll jump in here and there with some of my own thoughts. But I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think about this, because it's, it's pretty mind-blowing, some of the things that he has to say. So you'll see. So out of respect for your time, if you're on the XJW Reddit page, you might have already seen this message. But I know not everybody's on Reddit, and even if you are, Reddit moves so fast that it's easy to miss stuff. So hopefully this video will help get this message spread to even more people, because some of the things that he's saying here, it really needs to be known. And some of the other things that he's saying might be helpful to people that are just now waking up and they're going through those mental battles. You know how that is. And it might be helpful to those people. So here's the message. Greetings, fellow Pimos, Pomos, and even lurking JWs. We know you are here and that's okay. You're doing nothing wrong and you should not feel guilty. Welcome. I sincerely hope all who read or hear this message are doing well and striving to live their best lives. After spending many years at World Headquarters, currently still here, and working in many different Bethel departments, I feel inclined to share some of my observations and insights, some of which may already be known and some of which may not. So here they are. Number one, while it will never be stated on any monthly JW broadcast, never be conveyed on any morning worship program found on the JW Library app, or said at any Bethel lecture made available to the rank and file and online, the governing body is extremely paranoid and quite frankly exhausted dealing with all of the leaks and apostasy aimed at the Watchtower organization. They are actively taking steps to go on the offensive rather than having to constantly defend themselves in court. They even began a campaign of reaching out to local government officials in certain regions in hopes of politicking and garnering favor with the community. They are also already in the process of training potential new, younger governing body members. There is much speculation around Bethel as to when and if these new men will be announced as new governing body members, but time will tell. Okay, let's pause there for a second. He's already dropped a few bombshells. So first of all, the fact that the governing body members are getting this agitated about apostasy and leaks, that just shows that what we're doing is working. If you watched the video I did a couple months back about the future of the Watchtower, I talked a little bit about how we're living in the age of information. We're living in the age of the internet, social media. Data travels way too fast now. Companies like the Watchtower, they can't keep a lid on things anymore. Secondly, the part about the Watchtower reaching out to world governments to try to gain their favor. I mean, that's pretty ironic to say the least. Last I checked, unless there was some new light that I don't know about, last I checked, the Watchtower still teaches and preaches that in the end times, the governments are going to turn on them and persecute them. In fact, I had horrific stories told to me when I was a, a child about things that may happen in the end times towards me in order for me to prove my faith. You guys know what I'm talking about. So... You're telling me that you're going to run to the same people and try to get buddy-buddy with them, the same people that you truly believe are going to persecute you. That makes no sense. That makes no sense. And there's nothing I can say about that other than I really hope that wakes some people up. Lastly was that part about them training new, younger governing body members. Now, that's pretty interesting. And it, it makes sense. The governing body members are getting older. They're going to need a replacement sooner or later. I talked about that as well in that video, The Future of the Watchtower. But you got to wonder how it's going to play out. I mean, will these be the first governing body members that are not of the anointed? And if so, do they use that fact as leverage to try to prove to their members that we are really in the last seconds of the last days. 
they got to keep dangling that carrot. And if you ask me, that seems like the obvious strategy. He continues, while the Bethel family is composed of some genuine and loving people who feel they are really supporting Christ's brothers, there is a high level of cognitive dissonance felt by many here at Bethel, specifically since the pandemic slash lockdown began at Bethel in March of 2020. Many feel that the direction provided by the governing body has been overblown and quite frankly, overkill. The governing body and branch committee will brag that we have experienced zero C-19 related deaths in the U.S. branch, but will not truly acknowledge the hardships and struggles that have been felt by many at Bethel due to the restrictions placed on Bethelites since we went into lockdown. Many individuals at Bethel struggle with mental health issues such as depression and even suicidal thoughts which has been exacerbated by the restrictions placed on the Bethelites since the start of the lockdown. This has led to all sorts of issues at Bethel, such as drugs infiltrating the facilities, alcoholism, broken marital relationships, and unfortunately, even cases of domestic abuse between married couples, just to name a few. If the average rank and file member knew of the mental health crisis, as well as the worldly ish that goes on at Bethel, they would be quite appalled. So what he's saying here is pretty heartbreaking, and unfortunately, it's also not that surprising. In my last video, I made a CG animated story called Shunned. And in that story, I brought up the topics of over drinking and mental health awareness, domestic violence. And the reason that those things were in that story is because as much as the Watchtower leaders don't want to admit it, all of those things do happen in the organization. But the fact that these issues are happening at Bethel, that should give any current Jehovah's Witness something to really think about. Because I know for myself, the congregation that I grew up in, the area that I grew up in, we all thought of Bethel as like the most spiritual place on the planet. So the fact that the people working at Bethel are having to bring in drugs and drink a bunch of alcohol in order to mask their mental and emotional pain that should make you think. Maybe it's not the best life ever after all. He continues, Lastly, after spending many years here, meeting and associating with many high-ranking men, sitting in on hundreds of meetings where decisions have been made that have affected people's lives, I can genuinely say that this is not an organization run by God. It is simply a billion-dollar corporation no different than any other major corporation in existence today. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are in no way involved in the decisions or direction given that affect millions of people's lives. It is simply a group of men sitting at a table acting on what they feel is right in the moment. Oftentimes, the direction given is reactive. In many cases, it is a small group of men who truly hold the power and control. Sure, there are some good things about Bethel. You meet and spend time with some genuinely good and honest people. But there's also the bad, and in some cases, the ugly. I don't know what the future holds, but perhaps one day I will taste freedom and be able to tell my full story. Until then, if the opportunity presents itself, I will continue to share insights and past experiences if desired. So what he's saying here might be very helpful to people who are just waking up. Um, I know for me, I choose to not share my personal beliefs on this channel. I don't want to influence anybody one way or another. But that being said, I do know that there are a lot of people in the XJW community who are atheists or agnostic. But there's also people leaving who still believe in a God. And those people have the extra challenge of having to detach their concept of God from this man-made organization that claims to represent God. So for those people, here you have somebody who's an elder, who's serving at Bethel, He's been around these high-level meetings and things like that. And even he is saying there's no divine guidance here. It's all man-made decisions. And furthermore, it's man-made decisions made in a reactionary way. So that's the end of his message. And hopefully he releases more information when it is safe for him to do so. But I definitely thank him and as well as the person who contacted me to pass his message along. Um, I think it's good to get this information out there for people. Hopefully this is helping somebody out there. So um, let me know what you guys think of this. If you ask me, I think this is just showing that the tower is beginning to crumble. As they say, no civilization or organization in this case 
can be conquered from the outside until it has first destroyed itself from within. And based on what we're seeing here, the morale within Bethel is not where it should be for an organization that is trying to move forward. So with that, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned. I got more on the way. Take it easy on yourself. Much love to you all.